Alright everyone, how you guys doing? A lot of you have been asking, should I get the MacBook Air or should I get the Retina MacBook Pro? And that is what I'm going to do in this video, discuss. If you just want to see the test, the speed comparisons, click on the screens for that video. But I'm kind of going to give you my justification why I would spend money on a Retina MacBook Pro over a, let's say, low-end 13-inch MacBook Air. So the 13-inch MacBook Air comes in at £999, let's say £1,000, and the low-end 15-inch Retina costs £1,800 or £1,799. There's a difference there of £800. So what are you really going to get for, you know, what is the difference? What is the £800 really worth it as an enormous figure? Uh, so here is pretty much what you're going to get for that much money. So first up is the processors, dual core versus quad core. No brainer there, right? Double the RAM, 4 gigs versus 8 gigs. Here is the annoying part, you can't change the RAM on each machine. Um, so that is a bit of a bummer, so make sure you go for the RAM that you want. But sad news is, if you want to upgrade the RAM on the low end 15 inch Retina, you can't customize the machine, so you just have to go for the highest retina, which will cost you another four hundred, four to five hundred pound. Um, but the low-end one has got double the RAM compared to the MacBook Air. Storage, you know, m the more the better. So the MacBook Air's got one hundred twenty-eight. You've got two fifty-six, which is reasonable. Would I like to have more? For sure. But because this is this technology. Flash storage just came about in 2010, late 2010. Uh, it's going to be kind of a slow progress moving or increasing the capacities for every Mac. The graphics, right? So on the MacBook Air, you've got Intel HD 4000, which is decent enough. I've played games on it, Modern Warfare 3, Battlefield, and they work nice. And I've done test videos on my channel, you know, no complaints. But if you're really a hardcore gamer, you're really into your frames per second or FPS, whatever it's called. Uh, and if you want to play all the latest and greatest games coming in the next few months at high resolutions, of course, you've got a really good 15 inch crisp display and you want to make most uh, of the graphics, then you know the Retina is going to give you um, kind of the Intel HD 4000 plus the Nvidia, the latest graphics chips. Now coming onto the screen, my personal favorite, I didn't think it would be that much of an issue because I've always said the MacBook Air has got such a gorgeous display, how can anything beat it? Until that is when the 15 inch MacBook Air, well MacBook Pro came in. Wow, the screen size, 15 inch, I've had a 15 inch MacBook Pro before, um, but never have I, you know, I don't think anyone's had a 15 inch Retina display to mess around with. and the, the quality on it is just so crisp that it outdoes the MacBook Air and once you go Retina, you really can't go back. So I guess the Retina is worth the money. Are other Macs going to get Retina displays in the future? Of course. When flash storage was introduced on the MacBook Airs in 2010, look what has flash storage today. The MacBook Pros are starting to get them. No doubt the next generation iMacs are going to get them. So the Retina display come next year, of course the MacBook Airs are going to have Retina displays. And of course the resolution on this bad boy is just amazing. I've just been installing Windows on this today and I tell you what, Windows on this is absolutely fantastic. I've never really wanted to go back to Windows but after using it on this, you know, the clarity, the responsiveness, I think I should be awarded a Olympic gold medal for, you know, installing Windows at an all time record high. I think it was within 10 to 15 minutes max Windows 7 Ultimate. Um, this machine is no doubt a beast. And of course you've got a HDMI port. So here's the good thing about the 15 inch Retina. You can attach up to three monitors and they work fine on the resolution. There have been people t messing about with it. I haven't personally done it, but uh, it looks quite beastly with this picture. With four screens in total and there has been no complaints of lags at the moment which is of course good. But on the other side, the MacBook Air, for what it is, you can also connect dual displays to it, which is beauty. Really, all these things combined, I think it's worth it um, paying that £800. I don't have a problem with the price point of the Retina MacBook Pros, uh, considering if you are going to be going down the education route, you're getting two to £300 knocked off anyway, 
coupled with the £70 iTunes card. I've done a video in the past on how to get the cheapest Mac and right now is the time because the student discounts are on and there are instant savings to be made and that £800 will easily come down to £500 and for these things to you know get for £500 you're spending a grand on a Mac anyway. Might as well save up £500 more? Yeah? No? But that is my opinion guys, what do you guys think? Leave a comment below and if you haven't seen the MacBook Air 2012 and MacBook Pro Retina video playlists, they are appearing on your screen. So you can go ahead and watch the reviews, the comparison videos, the test videos and if you have any abuse to leave. No doubt, I don't need to say this, but you can leave it in the comments below. See you in the next video. Whether Cheers. it be an iPhone, a Nokia, HTC, Samsung, heck, any smartphone on the market, it's compatible with our garments. There is indeed a pocket for this and a pocket for that. You can buy it today at iGear.com. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. You never know, you might be the next one to get in on our free giveaway.